Welcome to the Deep Dive Spirituality Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Brian Russell, and today it's a privilege to have on the show Dr. Winfield Bevins and Dr. Mark Dunwoody. I've spoken to them both previously on solo episodes, but today they're here to talk about their outstanding new book, Healthy Rhythms for Leaders, Cultivating Soul Care in Uncertain Times. Winfield and Mark, beyond this collaboration, also have developed a training platform uh, for pastors, entrepreneurs, spiritual leaders called Missional Formation Coaching. have all those things in the show notes. I look forward to sharing this conversation with you today. Hey, Mark and Winfield, so great to have you back on the show. Great to be here with you. Thanks for having us, Brian. Yeah, good to be here, Brian. Good to see you. Yeah, it's so, so, it's so wonderful to be able to connect. Um, well, I'm super excited to talk with you today about the, the new book that you've co-written, Healthy Rhythms for Le- Leaders, Cultivating Soul Care in Uncertain Times. And you start off with the story of Lindis Farn. Uh, and can you, sh- can you share a little bit how that experience that you had together actually served in some ways to inspire the, the, this book and then the, this coaching network that you all are building? Yeah, we were, we were at a conference together, uh, which Winfield was involved in organizing in Manchester in England. And it was great. It was good fun. There's people from all over the world. And we drove up to Les- Lindis Farn for a little, you know, for a few days of R&R. And we didn't realize until we were there that we were actually completely exhausted. And we were zoinked, you know, the way when you're involved in conferences and talking to people and thinking about stuff. So it was, um, it really was a moment when we were there in this beautiful little island in the Northeast of England, where we unpacked the historical relevance of that island to the to the Christian story. Um, just literally sitting in the rocks together and watching the sea come in and out, you know, that was sort of like the, that was the spark of um, this book. Yeah, I think the, you know, I think the other thing with that was, again, Lindisfarne is the, is the place where St. Aidan came from Iona. A lot of people know of Iona, you know, as kind of the spiritual epicenter, but these, these great Celt- Celtic kind of monastic hubs were how Europe was evangelized. And, you know, Lindisfarne is this incredible little island that becomes an island twice a day and the tides come in and out. And so Aiden came from Iona and it became the spiritual hub of that preserved Christianity in the dark ages and um, was this island set apart, this tiny little island. And I think that was a fascinating thing for me is, is we just walked the island was these humble little monks evangelized the whole of the north of England on the spiritual little estuary, if you will. And I think as the Lord really spoke to us was this idea of what we call ebb and flow in a lot of our work of just retreating and being with God in prayer and contemplation and rest, and then going back out and taking the Lord's presence back out in mission. And mission's kind of like a spiritual breathing you know we inhale god in prayer and, and worship and contemplation and then we exhale um the presence of god in mission and so that's that really kind of just really formed us in a lot of what we've done together say something about the the nature of this this book was forged and written during the covid crisis and some level you know you talk about these monks that evangelized Europe during the dark ages. Some people look as a time of chaos and uncertainty. So you were able to draw inspiration uh, from the past. How did actually kind of living in the, co- during the COVID and the lockdown and having this really, I mean, well, it's not really, it's the truth. Uh, Mark's you're in Ireland, uh, Winfield, you're in uh, North America. I mean, in, in the United States. So how, how did this cross uh, transatlantic friendship time during chaos lockdown, everybody's freaking out, but you all just focused. Uh, so, so to tell a little bit about how um, your spiritual formations actually managed to thrive to such an extent that you're able to actually give during a time when many people were bunkered in. Yeah. I mean, it was, and it will be a really fascinating time for people to look back on wonder across the world this was a moment in our lifetimes uh, that hopefully won't harm for a long time. Yeah. The book was written, you know, was written at a time when I was living in London 
Winfield and I have have always said we would write books together for for years. However, we were always busy doing things, whereas COVID in a way just brought a stop to everything. And in that moment, you know, we talk about living in uncertain times and our whole heart is actually to create, and that's what we're working towards, a a community of 10,000 leaders across the world that are working towards um, thriving in uncertain times. Um, Like, I remember going out of the house one day during last March and getting a text message to say, don't leave your house unless necessary. Like, did we ever believe that would ever happen? So, like, it was such an uncertain time where we didn't know what was going to happen in the next week or month. Here in Ireland, we're just literally coming out of lockdown after months and months of most businesses being closed. Like, kids only got back to school two weeks ago after months. Like, it's such an uncertain time. So, so the book actually was written in a very uncertain time by two very um, uncertain guys who were trying to think, well, what what have we learned from, from the Bible about this and what can we learn from history about this? So we really had to um, look backwards to look forwards. And that's why there's such a emphasis on, on, on historical, um, you know, what, how did the church react in times like this in the past? And as you said, Lindisfarne and around that time was, was um, cloaked in a culture where the Roman Empire had just collapsed and, and that society had collapsed and Christianity brought order to society in a way that we now better understand. So yeah, the book was written in a, a period of very uncertain times. You know, I, I would just kind of add to that. The, the, the fun thing is, you know, because of our friendship and it's kind of like COVID gave us the space to really do some of the things we've been talking and dreaming about over the last, you know, five, six years, you know, Mark and I have trained leaders in Canada, England, and the U S and have kind of dreamt about partnering in some of these ways and writing together. And it actually started, we, we started writing a book, ebb and flow about Celtic missional spirituality. And then we're still going to finish that book, but we, honed in on these healthy rhythms for leaders in uncertain times because of the necessity that we really felt kind of compelled to write this. And because of technology, I mean, we literally FaceTime every day. And Mark, of course, sends me pictures of, of, of the sunset on the ocean. And he's like, oh, look at this. And I'm like, I, I wish I was there. Um, but again, I think that's another unique dynamic. This is um, this isn't a, just at the theoretical book. This comes out of our heart. This comes out of our own life, and and also out of our decades of working with with pastors and leaders around the world. Um, so, I'll just kind of add that little piece. That's good. And you all define healthy rhythms uh, as. Um... <clears throat> holy habits that root us in the life of God. Um, and then you break the book up into three pieces, uh, personal rhythms, leadership rhythms, and communal rhythms, which I think is a helpful insight. And we'll get to those other two, but um, what would you, what, if, if someone's listening and they're not really familiar with um, rhythms and they felt like their life was cast, how, how does having a healthy rhythm and having spiritual practices actually help us to thrive, whether the times are good times or bad times? And maybe in particular, what, what, what have you learned the last year that really helped to reinforce that for you? Yeah. I mean, rhythms, you know, essentially we, we're creatures of habit, mm-hmm. you know, um, we all have habits and rhythms in our lives. And so really that's what we're talking about is these whole developing these holy habits. And as you, as you look throughout the history of the church, you see that there have been these, I, you know, they're discipleship rhythms that help us grow in our faith, that keep us healthy. And one of the challenges and opportunities I think of COVID is, you know, one of the things we talk about, you know, in our introduction is discovering a new beach, you know, Mark, mm-hmm growing up in Ireland, I pastored on, on an island in the Outer Banks. And when storms come along, they just wipe out the beach and there's a new beach. And um, in many ways, whatever rhythms pastors and leaders had before COVID and before 2020, they're done. And working with leaders, so many leaders that I've seen that coaching um, have said, I, I, they're struggling with creating new rhythms. And, and so that's where I think the power of this book is helping people. And maybe the rhythms you had before COVID weren't healthy. And I think that's the thing is a lot of pastors and leaders, Christian leaders actually um, probably weren't healthy before. 
and now we're struggling to regain a new sense of normalcy. And I think that's kind of what we're trying to help leaders do through, uh, you know, developing a rule of life, developing these patterns of ebb and flow, um, developing a lifestyle of, of, of reflection using things like the daily exam and to reflect daily and deeply on what God's doing in their life, their family, their, their, their ministry context, wherever you serve, um, to help you have these rhythms to where you lead in a way that's healthy. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah, and as Winfield says, you know, the, we use the analogy of the beach a lot. You know, after the storm, you go out. You know, when I was younger, I didn't go out to look at the wreckage and the destruction. I went out to look for the new beach. And I think that what we point out in the book is that we all have personal rhythms. We all have leadership rhythms and we all have communal rhythms at the moment. That's happening because we're human beings. We interact with each other. So those rhythms are there. Um, what the book provides is just a wee bit of historical templates of trying to um, be healthy in those rhythms and be aware of those rhythms that equips you then when the when the, the change keeps happening as it will. I mean, the change is going to keep um, getting faster and faster in every area of our lives that you see a new beach, you see a new opportunity. You realize that you're, you're here to bring something new to the world and you start reflecting, you know, every day what you're actually bringing you to the world, you know? I love that metaphor about the, the new beach. And, uh, and I know that right at the heart of the missional formation coaching, uh, that this, this book supports and even the vision for 10,000 is that, um, is the Exum and its journaling practice. And it's kind of interesting that that's a, a practice that goes all the way back to what it's, um, uh, what the Reformation time or the Counter Reformation with the with the Jesuits and, and such. So we're talking about a practice that's what over 500 years old, but it's still it seems new. So in a sense, as you think about the new beach, it's going back and rediscovering resources, really powerful practices that the Christ following movements had for uh, for centuries. Obviously, the X Men probably has roots even deeper back into different types of journaling practices that the that the church has been doing for millennia. But uh, say something about the ancient future dynamic that you've been able to embed in this yeah i mean that's um i think that's a lot of the language how that's a great way to describe it is this isn't just kind of we're, we're not advocating you know packing up and moving into a monastery what what we're looking at is healthy rhythms and patterns that have sustained christians throughout the ages and drawing from that wisdom and bringing it into the present um and it really is an ancient future it's looking back to the past so that we can live in a healthy way in the present but also um help recreate the future this new beach and this is what the church has done in every age the church has survived and thrived um out of every pandemic before out of every crisis out of persecution this really is a moment of you know i've been kind of sharing and using the phrase disruptive grace as i talk with leaders like in some ways um the lord's in this the lord's kind of given us kind of an opportunity to establish healthy rhythms and patterns for christians and for the church in the season and so i think that's one of the things that mark and i both share is it's an optimistic book. It's not a pessimistic book. Um, yes, we're, you know, we use the term, Mark first introduced me to this, and maybe he'll elaborate on this, but, you know, we use a language of realistic hope. You know, Christians are called to be hopeful. Um, you know, Christ is the hope of the world. He is, he is the hope of glory. And um, it doesn't mean that, you know, we stick our head in the sand, and um, but what it really means is that we believe that God's working in and through these things and wants us to be healthy in the midst of all of this and is going to help us navigate it. And so I think that's kind of some of the other dynamics with that ancient future. We're drawing wisdom and hope um, from the past to kind of look forward and recreate the future. Um, I think there are some exciting things ahead um, for all of us, you know, as we just hold on to Christ through this thing. Yeah, hope is such a such a powerful thing, isn't it? You know, and there's even been studies done that, that have said that, you know, um, hope and fear are something that's embedded in the structure of our brain, you know, that fight or flight response. Um, so we've, we've always, had, as human beings, we've always had this um, 
sense of what it meant to be hopeful um, in as we've as we've been here and we lived our lives and we you know we entered just missional design thinking in the book as well as a new way of trying to look at the world and understand your leadership practices. Missional design thinking is is born of the time. You know the church was in a time where you know New Newtonian science sort of ruled like you know cause and effect. If you do this, this will happen. The world's changed. You know, and the world's changed, and we understand more of a quantum physics approach to life. Um, where if you do this, this could happen. A hundred different things could happen. So we we look at we enter just people to missional design thinking and what it means to really um, to to listen to your community, to listen to God in your life, um, to listen to the needs, to the pains, to the gains of the people you seek to serve, and then how we enter just a structure to try and um, build into that and work into it. And it's something that, you know, all organizations um, use now. It, we're not using it so much in the church because we're still, a lot of our um, education practices are embedded in the time before the internet. So it's fast that we just, we give a glimpse of that and we give a glimpse of how, you know, really we used to manage people and run things out of like concrete systems. Whereas we're, we're managing people's knowledge, we're managing out of participating in their lives. You know, church leaders and church planners are participating in others' lives, not from a place of hierarchy, hierarchy or power. And we just dive into that a wee bit and give some practical examples of that. So it's exciting, you know, again, it goes back to the new beach and the realistic hope, you know, the realistic hope after the second world war as a world, we just thought things were going to get better and better. And then the last 20 or 30 years, we've been hit by so many disasters and financial crises and everything else. And, and our TV and our, uh, all the mainstream media seem to always be telling that life's bad. It's going to get worse. So we just, we look at what it means to look to Jesus, to look to scripture and to look to the history of the church to have a realistic hope in our lives. Yeah, that was, that, that was, that was a great. And, and one of my favorite parts of the book is the missional design thinking. So thanks for introducing that. Leaders are going to find that super helpful. And, and, and I think the book, even just the way it's laid out it, it models that because you have the, the starts with the personal rhythms and then the middle part of the books where you bring the missional design thinking in with the leadership rhythms, but then you end with a really helpful section on communal um, and when I ask a question about the communal, but, uh, and I, but I, I love the quote, this is earlier in the book, but you talk about mission isn't just something or doing something for God. It begins and ends with being with God. So in a sense, it's always a communal piece anyway, but I think that's a critical insight. And I'm guessing a lot of pastors, you all coach pastors, or we all, we all have our coaching practices. Uh, and, and, I, and I've noticed the, the pastors that were already in the, in these coaching groups, at least with me, uh, did really well during COVID because we'd already established these rhythms. It wasn't, doesn't mean it was easy because it wasn't, but they had a foundation. But I'm thinking a lot of leaders now have kind of almost crashed into a wall and it's been, you know, 13, almost 14 months now. Um, <clears throat> Talk about that insight, though, that somehow we've trained people to kind of be oh, maybe the heroic leader. I'm on mission. I'm a church planner. But in, in, and then sometimes we just forget that the whole point was actually to be in communion with God and then others. Yeah, I. Well, I mean, I think the one thing that we model in, in writing the book together, again, it comes out of our own friendship. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there have been times again, we've got the realistic hope we said, but I mean, man, this past year, our, you know, our own friendship, I think models this reality. There have been times, you know, Mark and I have, you know, I've been up, he's been down, he's been up, you know, we've prayed for each other, encouraged each other. And, you know, the other thing, and I'll just share a personal story as we kind of transition the book, again, it goes from personal to leadership rhythms, and then the communal rhythms, how do we share this in the ecosystem of, the organizations that we lead, whether it be a marketplace, nonprofit, or a church, you know, we really try to empower, you know, with some, some tools, one with, with coaching, um, how do you coach others that you're leading and that you're working with? And then um, how do you create what we call soul care groups? And, um, you know, I've been a part of a you know, these were inspired as you look at, again, great historic movements, oftentimes small group structures of sorts have been a part of these. 
And this is one of the ways that we kind of encourage leaders to create an ecosystem or to create a culture of kind of healthy rhythms and kind of coaching within that church organization. And so um, one is through kind of these micro small groups that we call soul care groups. And I've been a part of one of these for four years now with, you know, four guys here in town, we meet every Thursday. And actually, as soon as we get off, Brian, I'm, I'm, I've got a bolt and go and all of us have had our vaccinations. So we're in person together, which is really cool. Awesome. Yeah. But when all of this hit, um, we just went on Zoom. We literally have not missed a week um, since COVID started because it's a small group of four of us. And, you know, it's inspired around um, kind of the early Wesleyan band meetings that began with the first question, how is it with your soul? Um, and so we kind of just share three simple questions. What I love about these, these micro groups is anyone can do them anywhere in the world. You can do them anywhere. I mean, you can do them in a pub, a backyard, you can do them online. And we just kind of narrowed it down to three simple questions. How is it with your soul? What are you struggling with this week? Are there, you know, you could expand that to say, is there sin in your life? Is there anything you're keeping secret? But your soul, what are you struggling with? And then thirdly, what is the spirit doing in your life? And that could be a missional shaped question that could be you know, um, what is, where do you sense God moving you and, and, and calling you to? And just asking those simple three questions each week, anyone can do them. It's, you know, it's not a complicated Bible study. You don't have to have a PhD. Uh, and that's, it's, that's, I think, a real powerful replicable kind of framework that people can take. They could take it into the workplace. They could use it and multiply them in their churches. You could share them with your family in the home, you know, just real simple, practical uh, ways that we can kind of help encourage soul care um, with those that we lead and love. Well, let me, let me ask you a final question uh, and we'll start wrap, uh, wrapping this, uh, this particular episode up, by the way, we'll have links to the new book and you should check it out. Healthy rhythms for leaders, cultivating soul care in uncertain times. You can love that title. Uh, and I'll have links to Winfield and Mark's uh, social uh, media and the missional formation. And I want to end by hearing about the missional formation coaching that you all have set up that uh, local churches can, can buy into individual pastors can jump in to talk about what uh, this, this exciting new ministry and project that, uh, that you all are building. Yeah. I mean, last year was such a change for, for both of us. Um, and I ended up realizing that, you know, Winfield touched on it there. I think with the book, it, it really democratizes the personal leadership communal rhythms that you need to thrive. Mm -hmm. And I think we're in a world that's being democratized by the internet not always in a good way, but there are some some good ways. And we, we have the ability to take responsibility for our rhythms and who we are. And one of the things that we've seen the last few years, even the last 10 years, is all these people have went to these big universities and had these big degrees in finance and business and everything else have, have led businesses that have collapsed in this new world. You know, lots of denominations are really struggling with people who have got great degrees and you know, education and everything, their churches are collapsing. We need a new way of understanding what it means to take responsibility in our lives to bring something new to the world. Um, and missional formation coaching has really birthed around that of trying to help people understand that you are bringing something new to the world. You're called to bring something new to the world. And what would that look like to walk along someone else and to thrive? Um, and that's why the book was really, it's changed its emphasis um, at, through time and we now we have the book um setting with uh, people in in uh, healthcare because my goodness the healthcare workers have just they've saved the world haven't they they're incredible people they literally have saved our world and um, they're just amazing people healthcare workers church leaders business people we work with entrepreneurs everything else and then that's reflected in mission formation coaching so we have designed um uh really accessible training courses that people can use these principles in their life through a digital experience that's always there, that, that stays forever in your phone and your computer to keep going back. So it's not like traditional forms of education where that can disappear. And, and it's been incredible. And we have this goal and we're working towards it. 
just yesterday we we partner with an entrepreneur organization that, that trains um, entrepreneurs uh, around the world because what we see at the minute is there's just so many people saying right there's a new beach <laughs> they're jumping from from jobs they realize how precious life has been to them in the last year uh, lots of people have suffered huge um, grief and trauma in their lives and they're just they're doing a different thing so we our heart is just to walk alongside all different types of people that are are wanting to try and do a new thing and make it as accessible uh, as possible to those people and on a global scale yeah yeah the you know the missional formation you know we do coaching missional formation coaching um but really what we, our vision is you know mark said is to train 10,000 missional formation coaches around the world and this is what's amazing is God's really doing it. We currently have leaders in close to 15 different countries, um, as far away as um, Dubai and Singapore, and it's really just been amazing. And so what we've done is we've created a lot of coach training is extremely expensive. And what we've, you know, to use Mark's language, we've democratized kind of the whole industry to say we want to make it accessible. And we put it on a mobile first app to where anywhere, anyone, anywhere in the world can take this training, learn these rhythms and gain insights in how to coach others in these healthy rhythms. So imagine if you had 10,000 pastors and leaders that were trained in healthy rhythms, how to coach the people that they lead, then you've got healthy organizations. And these, this is creating healthy, sustainable ecosystems um, around the world and when we start talking about that, man, I get really excited because I think that's the future of the church. We don't need more churches. We need healthier churches um, that are going to be sustainable, that are going to uh, uh, kind of multiply health. And I think we've multiplied bad <laughs> examples. I think we need some healthy leaders that they're going to be the ones to change the world. And I think that's what gets us excited at what it, it you know, get that's what gets us up in the morning is dreaming about how can we change the world you know one healthy leader at a time and so the, this training platform is really the the, the engine that we think is going to do it um, the book is kind of the low-hanging fruit but really we want to point people to the coach training it's accessible it's um, you know the feedback has been amazing uh, it's very interactive and I think it's 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 one of the most dynamic kind of online training platforms that's out there. So you can see I'm excited about it, Brian. Well, no, it's fantastic. I've I've gone through the training, and uh, I mean, I enjoyed that. And you know, if I was if I had a if I was a pastor of a church right now, I could bring my whole staff in and do this and and, and have guidance. You could do it together. So it's it's so to, where do people find out more about that? What's what is what is the website? We're going to have this in the notes. Where, where can they find it's, out? About uh, we'll this? go to missionalformationcoaching.com. Yeah. And on the website, you know, you'll see kind of, you know, three big things is, you know, we offer multiple coaching packages, consultation that we work with different organizations, but then there's a courses page and we have multiple courses on there from the design thinking that we've talked about, the missional formation, the coaching training. So you can actually go through this eight week training program. You can be trained in coaching. You can be trained in the art of design thinking. And then, then we have kind of a kind of a simpler course that for just missional formation and a rule of life course. And then you can find out more about our book. And Mark and I also kind of do a podcast where we interview leaders kind of on the resource page and you can kind of connect with us and kind of follow along with some of the conversations that we're having there. Yeah. And we love a chat. We love an old chat, you know, so like you can hit a button, um, the joys of technology and, and book a time to talk with us and it's going to be one of us you're talking with you know so yeah. we love a chat and just if you're listening to this and you've got a vision and you you understand the importance of having healthy rhythms in your life um and how important that's going to be because our times aren't going to get any more certain um anytime soon so uh yeah we're always we're always open to chat i love that it's like even with the technology and this technology is letting 
get this message all over the world, whether it's through the podcast or through the, the website itself, but then it's still high touch. And that's what sits underneath all these things. So again, I want to thank both of you for uh, being my guest again on the Deep Dive Spirituality Conversations podcast. Thank you for uh, the work that you're doing, how you're answering God's call and, and how, how you model the very things that you're teaching, which I think is so important in today's world and, and how you're actually sharing those, uh, those gifts with the world and helping us all to find those new beaches that you're talking about. Cheers, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us, Brian. It's been great being with you. Appreciate your work and all that you're doing. And um, just thankful to just be able to share about these healthy rhythms with leaders. Thanks for helping us get the word yeah. out there. Well, you are welcome. And then thanks everyone for listening all the way to the end. Until next time, live by faith, be known by love, and be a voice of hope in the world. Thank you so much for listening to the Deep Dive Spirituality Conversations podcast all the way to the end. If you found this episode particularly helpful, would you share it with your network and or leave a review to help other people find it? If you want to find out a little bit more about the guests or find links to resources mentioned during the podcast, check out the show notes. And if you're interested in finding out some information about my uh, forthcoming book in late 2021 on Centering Prayer, please check out Centering Prayer Book. Dot com. If I could serve you in any way, reach out via email, deepdivespirituality at gmail.com. Until next time, be a blessing to someone today.